The core of any space vehicle is embodied by the rocket engine. The task of crafting and overseeing the operation of a solitary engine is in no way a simple endeavor. Yet, a far more demanding challenge presents itself, the successful ignition of numerous rocket engines in unison. Within SpaceX's journey, spanning from the evolutionary phases of Starship, evolving from prototype SN8 to SN11, a consistent series of vexing tribulations entwined the Raptor engines. This conundrum endured through the inaugural orbital launch of Ship 24 and Booster 7, wherein no fewer than eight engines encountered shit down whilst descending. Nevertheless, the passage of merely four months, replete with assessments and enhancements to the engines, witnessed SpaceX ultimately vindicating the dependability of Super Heavy. This assertion was ratified via the most recent static fire test, conducted with 33 Raptor engines, marking a resounding triumph. So, what strategy did SpaceX employ to surmount the enigma of the Raptor engines? Anticipate a profound exploration of this, and an array of other subjects, in this video. Commencing its expedition from the fabrication facility to the launch mount in orbit on the 23rd of August, SpaceX orchestrated a preliminary spin prime assessment for Booster 9. Following this assay, a dedicated day was allocated to the methodical scrutiny of the rocket's components before embarking on a static fire trial. Finally, on the 25th of August, SpaceX executed a prompt static fire evaluation for Booster 9, galvanizing all 33 Raptor engines into action. The proceedings had been forewarned by the company on Platform X, affording enthusiasts such as ourselves the privilege of witnessing the event in real time. As the Starbase team geared up for the second static fire of Booster 9, viewers around the world were poised to witness the event live, with the live stream kicking in a few minutes before ignition. A noticeable shift in SpaceX's approach has emerged a proactive stance in sharing every stride of Starship's evolution with the general public. This commitment is particularly evident in their dedication to refining the visual experience, presenting a diverse array of angles with a remarkable degree of professionalism. The live broadcasts are of exceptional quality, further raising expectations for the impending spectacle. The forthcoming static fire test promises to be a sight to behold a meticulously comprehensive demonstration that unfolds seamlessly from top to bottom. The intricate choreography commences with the fueling of the immense super heavy first stage. This process commenced an hour prior to the static fire, holding at T 40 seconds to allow fuel temperatures to reach optimal levels. Once the prescribed conditions were met, the countdown commenced its inexorable march. At T20 seconds, the Firex system, purposed for the controlled dispersal of gases, was activated. This was swiftly followed, at T5 seconds, by the initiation of the water deluge system, contributing to the dynamic sequence. The pivotal moment arrived as Booster 9 kindled its Raptor engines, ushering in a static fire that endured for approximately 6 seconds a precisely calculated span. As scripted, the engines ceased their fiery dance bringing this particular chapter of the test to a close. This marked the second static fire trial for Booster 9 on the launch pad. In accordance with SpaceX's official proclamation, the event proved triumphant as Super Heavy Booster 9's static fire incited all 33 Raptor engines to life. All but a duo sustained their operation for the complete duration, emblematic of the team's resounding success. Commendations flowed in the direction of SpaceX's accomplished crew for achieving the significant milestone. The enthusiasm was palpable, notably even from Elon Musk himself, as evidenced by a tweet he shared on his personal page. The tweet hailed the successful static fire of the Starship Super Heavy Booster. All 33 engines burst into fiery existence simultaneously for a remarkable six-second span. The combustion emanated an intense vitality. While a pair of engines experienced a partial interruption in the process, it hardly detracted from SpaceX's overarching victory. Booster 9 emerged as a testament to remarkable progress when contrasted with its antecedent trial. In that earlier attempt, four engines had prematurely ceased operation, and the combustion duration had been notably curtailed, spanning a mere three seconds. 
This achievement indeed warrants hearty applause for SpaceX's unwavering dedication. The narrative takes an even more astounding turn considering that a mere fortnight elapsed between resolving engine issues and this substantial leap forward. The intricacies of the Starship rocket system unfold most profoundly within the heart of its architecture, the super-heavy component. Its complexity is magnified by the myriad rocket engines it employs a characteristic that introduces a fascinating puzzle of arrangement. In this intricate dance, SpaceX stands resolute in their belief that a multitude of smaller engines outweighs the merits of a limited count of larger ones. The rationale becomes evident through an insightful comparison. Imagine a scenario where a rocket boasts three engines and one falters, leading to a loss of 33% thrust, imperiling the mission's success. Contrastingly, a configuration with 33 engines, one of which encounters a malfunction, would experience a mere 3% thrust loss, allowing the rocket to persist on its trajectory toward orbit. Moreover, steering prowess is conferred by the ability to swivel rocket nozzles, thereby deftly redirecting thrust and inducing rotational forces. The beauty is that not every engine necessitates such manipulation. When dealing with smaller engines, the forces requisite for jimbling a couple are relatively modest. However, envision the challenge posed by a solitary colossal engine, the endeavor becomes considerably more formidable. Beyond the realm of dynamic control, the advantages of multiplicity extend to the realm of manufacturing efficiency and cost effectiveness. For a scenario where a solitary large engine is utilized and 10 rocket launches are executed annually, the demand for engines remains at a mere 10, insufficient to warrant a large-scale manufacturing undertaking. Thus, these engines would be meticulously handcrafted. In stark contrast, the employment of 33 smaller engines for 10 launches annually necessitates a total of 330 engines. This critical mass triggers the application of mass production techniques, affecting a noteworthy reduction in cost. Procuring components in quantities exceeding 100 commonly garners favorable price concessions, facilitating the possibility of automating several steps in the manufacturing process. Adding another layer of complexity is the dimension of reusability, a characteristic inherent in rockets like the Falcon series and Starship. The trajectory of ascent demands robust thrust as it wrestles with the burden of substantial fuel load and the presence of the second stage rocket. As the descent phase commences, the booster operates on dwindling fuel reserves and pots weighs with the second stage. Here, the advantage is illuminated. A singular mass of engine struggles to facilitate a controlled descent without inadvertently thrusting the craft upward again. Contrastingly, an assembly of multiple smaller engines permits a more graceful maneuver. By deactivating select engines and operating the remaining one at a lower thrust level, control is retained even during the phase of minimal thrust. In the chronicle of spacefaring ingenuity, the tale of engine configuration reveals itself as a compelling fusion of engineering primatism and visionary foresight. Consequently, the strategic decision by SpaceX to opt for a higher number of engines emerges as a bounty of advantages rather than a collection of challenges. This judicious choice traces back to the nascent facies of the company's rocket development journey. The results gleaned from the latest static fire test are particularly noteworthy, a remarkable tally of 31 engines having undergone successful testing. This achievement conjures a semblance with the aggregate of engines assessed during the conclusive static fire of Booster 7, an episode heralding its subsequent launch. With this context in mind, it's plausible to conjecture that the present trial could well signify the culminating static fire for Booster 9, marking a pivotal juncture before the wet dress rehearsal commences in tandem with the complete assemblage of Ship 25. While not as theatrically captivating as an actual liftoff, the significance of wet dress rehearsals is undeniable. These drills inherently validate the secure capability of accommodating multiple propellant loads concurrently. This serves as a crucial stepping stone toward achieving the requisite conditions for an orbital launch endeavor. Additionally, the insights gained from the recent static fire trial of Booster 9 unveil a more immaculate perspective of the ground system. The visual evidence of scattered debris, soil, 
Fragments of concrete and end wine rebar in proximity to the launch platform were ostensibly associated with the static fire test of Booster 9. However, the reality belies this, as only a minority of the debris can be attributed to this specific event, while the majority is of pre-existing origin. This situation evokes memories of the ill-fated inaugural test flight in April, when the absence of sound suppression mechanisms contributed to notable damages. These included the breakage of concrete blocks from the launch platform, cascading debris across miles around the Starbase site in South Texas. Around four weeks ago, a triumphant chapter was etched as SpaceX triumphantly evaluated a water deluge and deflection mechanism newly embedded beneath the Starship launch stand. This innovation integrates a cooling steel plate alongside a water deluge system. During the course of the static fire test, both the ground systems and propellant handling mechanisms unfurled in symphony, mirroring a typical launch sequence. The meticulousness of this endeavor, akin to a full-fledged flight, guarantees that both the rocket and the ground systems discharge their designated functions as envisaged. With the manifest success of this trial, the imminent threshold that separates SpaceX from the second test flight of the Starship rocket materializes as regulatory approval. The pivotal stipulation rests upon securing launch authorization from the FAA, an entity currently engrossed in scrutinizing the comprehensive report submitted by SpaceX subsequent to the April test flight incident. Pending the approval or potential amendments to this comprehensive report, a collaborative assessment by both the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, and SpaceX will pinpoint the requisite corrective measures that the company must undertake prior to the imminent second test flight. The overarching aim of these measures is to guarantee the utmost safety of not only human life, but also property and the diverse wildlife inhabiting the expanse surrounding the South Texas launch site, an enclave ensconced within the embrace of the Gulf of Mexico's wetlands. With optimistic anticipation, we set our sights on a seamless unfolding of these proceedings. The fervent wait for this impending event has been underscored by our eagerness, and the curtains are poised to rise in the month of September. This draws the current installment of our discourse to a close. We trust that today's offering was both engaging and enlightening, perhaps bestowing upon you a novel kernel of knowledge. We cordially invite you to share your thoughts, impressions, and reflections in the comments section below. Your invaluable feedback resonates deeply with us, serving as a compass that guides us in our quest to craft more enriched content for your consumption. From the depths of our hearts, we extend gratitude for your viewership, and we eagerly anticipate reconvening with you in our forthcoming encounter. Until then, stay well and stay tuned.